to close your eyes or and take the arm or the hand of someone standing next to you or people standing next to you. <laughs> Lower your eyes. And for those who've walked today, think of the miles you've walked since Middlesex. For those who started yesterday, think of the sleet and the rain. <laughs> for those who started on Sunday, Bring back the memory of that hillside in Gabrags Park in our time together. For those who are here on Saturday, time walking along that pipeline route, that magical dirt and back roads. For those who started on Friday, remember our opening ceremony, the green middleberry. Thank you for your feet. Thank you, legs. And thank you, friends who have held one another up as we have walked these many miles. Now let's go tell these folks across the street just why this is so important for us and for all of us. Why we've put those blisters on our feet, why we've endured that cold and sleep share our hearts and our love and our hope for the new world we wish to have reborn. Let's go eat. Thank you. Cool. I, I'm Rob Kidd with the Sierra Club. Um, first off, my heart is so grateful for the, those who marched from Middlebury to Mount Hillier today, uh, the last five days, to demand climate action. Uh, it's a sad state of affairs that we have in Vermont that supposedly green Vermont is not really moving forward on addressing climate. And there's like all these different fears are happening, whether it's going to cost too much money or whether it's going to impact so and so's too much. We're just not going to stand still. So while we have other states going to 100% renewable energy, implementing electric vehicle incentives, we're debating policies that are going to implement small incremental changes. And that's not what's what needed. The gravity of this crisis is for strong climate action, not just simplified action. Recently, the House passed a weatherization bill, um, H-439, to kind of double the uh, revenues for the home weatherization program to make sure that people in low incomes have the money to weatherize their homes, thus saving energy and saving money and creating local jobs. But there's people who are kind of upset over that. They're thinking it's regressive and they think it's not going to do enough help. Well, you know, there's comes to the point that we need to come up and act boldly on things, implement policies that are going to be the right thing for our future, future generations, not just for one time, one person. We need to think about the whole. And, and so that's what I see a lot of the folks out here marching are doing. They're telling us, you know, enough is enough. Let's act on this. Let's create these bold solutions. You know, let's ban fossil fuel infrastructures. Let's pass a global 
Warming Solutions Act, what's Explore Carbon Pricing, all those other elements. What's really promote electric vehicle incentives? You know, the Vermont Energy Action Network released a report that said in order to reach our climate goals for transportation, we're going to have to have 90,000 electric vehicles. Right now we have less than 3,000 electric vehicles and plug-in hybrids. So what does the governor propose? Uh, an electric vehicle incentive program that only covers about promoting 200 to 300 new vehicles. Now, uh, one of the members of the House basically said the governor's request is piddly. And this is, you know, for a leader in the Vermont State House saying the governor's request is piddly. So what happens? Our legislative leaders are passing piddly legislation. So uh, I'm glad, to, like I said, I'm glad to see the folks here from 350 and all the other movement organizers are out here today marching for climate justice. Cool. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> what about, yeah, but what about saying something about the climate bills? None of the climate bills that have come up in the last four years have actually been acted upon. Well, I mean, that's a lot, a lot there's a lot of fear going on. Everybody's always about gloom and doom. Like this is gonna, this bill is gonna cost too much money or it's gonna not uh, help so-and-so. And the real reality is, is if we don't do something, we're gonna, we're gonna be dead in the water. So like, you know, particularly originally four years ago, we introduced a, um, a carbon pricing bill that equitably distributed money back into the economy, invested money in renewables that would help people transition to new energy futures. Now, that's what we need to do. Even like the, um, the last addition to the carbon pricing bill, nobody wanted to do it because there was a lot of fear about it was going to cost 80 cents per gallon. But in reality, these programs are going to actually make it more economically efficient for the state of Vermont. 76 cents per um, of every dollar spent on fossil fuels gets shipped out of state. So why are we doing programs that are just going to continue supporting our fossil fuel industry and out of state and even out of country. We want to create local jobs here. And that's why some of these climate bills that are being addressed are just not being taken up. So that's why people need to make sure they always contact our legislators at all time. And for those who don't know the number, it's 802-828-2228. And they can always ask your legislator to act boldly on climate. Okay? Bravo. Cool. Okay. <laughs> 350 Vermont work together in an interfaith, intersectional way that's very beautiful, trying to create the survival culture we need for the coming climate apocalypse. And uh, regardless of whether we get legislation this time, it's been good for us. And I'm hopeful that the uh, legislature bans fossil fuel infrastructure. And I hopeful, I'm hopeful that we uh, generally turn a cultural trend against the fossil fuel industry and uh, save uh, the planet for these kids who are so awesome. And uh, so thank you for the Community Access TV and uh, everyone should just join the revolution in progress and uh, save the planet while there's time. There was some wet feet, um, but you know, small price to pay for uh, averting climate disaster. Um, and uh, you know, I, I said that we had one mostly be incredibly beautiful weather and then we had one day of challenging weather, but that was sort of like being in the trash compactor during Star Wars. You know, it's, it's the part of the Jungian hero journey that What's requires some on? courage. Uh, so it worked out positively in the end. It can't all be like, you know, sunny days. We had like Simpsons, the weather coming into uh, Richmond with a, a brass band. So, I mean, it's, it's been high and low and some all in between. That we're willing to sacrifice because we know uh, it's going to be much more in the future. So we should be, get stronger, but we should also demonstrate demonstrate what climate ambition looks like, and we hope the legislature does the same.
I, I don't know that there's a lot of climate change deniers left, particularly in Vermont, but there are some in the state house who still, they don't deny climate change is happening, but some deny humans' role in it. Uh, but the science is very clear. Our activity, our emissions, the increased emissions due to human activity has greatly affected uh, our global climate. And that's on each of us individually to make individual adjustments, but then it's also really important as a governmental entity representing the people as a whole and thinking ahead to having a planet for our, our own future as well as our children's future that we have to take bolder steps. Uh, the legislature has passed different pieces of legislation over the years. Uh, most of them right now are not to the scale of the problem. Uh, I just heard the other day that our, our state goal had been to weatherize 80,000 homes by 2020. We've weatherized about 25,000 and this year's legislation that came out of the House is going to increase it from about 800 a year to 1,300 a year. Well, 2020 is only a couple years out and if we're doing 1,300 a year and there's 60,000 homes short of our goal, we're we're missing something. Uh, and so I think where a lot of people are frustrated and I'm really excited about the, the walk that these folks took to uh, sort of amplify the voice of the frustration that's out there that we need to do more and we need to be more bold with respect to weatherization, with mass transportation, with education about individual choices that we can each make to be reducing our individual footprint, but also as a whole, how can we collectively be pooling our resources to also make some change and impact our old housing stock, our transportation system so that uh, folks can, can be in buses instead of individual cars, expanding broadband so folks can work from home and not have to drive everywhere to get to work. We need to be looking at this from all different directions. We need to be looking at it from carbon sequestration in our soil. How do we pay farmers, not just for the product they're making, but for how they're treating the earth and the water so that that earth and water are in better shape and our air for all of us and our children to have in the future. Uh, but we need folks' voices, and I would say to folks watching, the key in democracy is people. And if people care and take the time to spend, say, 15 minutes a week on democracy, calling your legislator and saying, well, what are you doing, and is it possible to do more? Asking questions, being kind, even and friendly, not only with folks who are maybe in opposition to the positions that we have, but even with our friends and allies who are supporting good things, but maybe need a little support to go a little farther. It's time to do bold legislation, and even if we lost five or ten seats, we would not lose the majority, and we could rest easy for the change we made. We have to listen to Greta Thunberg. Fifty years from now, when our children and grandchildren say, you know, why didn't you do more? I think now's the time to ask that question of ourselves. Why aren't we doing more so that our grandchildren have a planet and our children have a planet and even at the end of my life farming, we have a planet that will produce food and be able to shelter people and not have as extreme weather events. Why aren't we doing more is the question we need to be asking today and folks need to ask their legislators why aren't we doing more uh, to help build that pressure for the political will to grow. Hi, I'm Andrea Stander, and I'm here at the final day of the climate walk, um, Next Steps for Climate Change, and I'm here wearing two hats. I um, am on the board of 350 Vermont, just recently joined that board as an individual citizen, and I also work with Rural Vermont, which is an advocacy organization for small-scale farming, um, and so we're involved in the climate movement because we really feel strongly that uh, farms have a role to play in keeping carbon in the ground and providing a secure food system that is sustainable over time um, and is going to support our rural communities with livelihoods and healthy food. It's very disappointing that the legislature which started this session with big promises that they were going to take climate change seriously and they were going to work on things in a very deliberative way that they have not made much progress with a variety of bills that have been introduced. That's a huge disappointment. I sometimes feel that what's going on is that the degree of urgency associated with this issue um, is not being uh, taken to heart by the legislators. Uh, it's a very incremental process up at the State House. Things take time and all the deliberative, deliberation that has to go on. But I think everyone here who's on the march recognizes that 
This is an urgent issue. We are running out of time to take bold steps to uh, put in place policies that are going to help us adapt and survive and perhaps even uh, make some difference in the climate changes that are going on. Um, you also asked me about the Green New Deal at the federal level. I think it, it is one of those bold steps. I think people are getting a little hung up in the fact that it lacks detail and they are like, well, we can't do anything with this because we don't know what the details are. But I think at this point, it's time for bold action. It's time for bold steps. And we may have to muddle through the details, but we have to get moving. We have got to take action today. So come join us at the State House.
it read their tags. Please protect our ancestors, all our ancestors, of our past, our present, and our future. Preserve the wild and the tame, the public land and the private land, the rivers and the fields. Preserve the outspoken and the quiet, the young and the old, the beautiful and the rugged. Please support our maple syrup industry. Protect the ancient land of the Nadakana, home of the Abernathy. <laughs> the climate crisis is upon us all. The chance to see our planet Earth are waning. The chances to see our planet Earth are waning. Please find it within your moral self to act now. Spread the love, not the fossil fuel infrastructure. Please preserve this Earth so we can have a beautiful future living in harmony with creation. Please preserve my future and my children's future. Please protect all the love in this state. Please protect our soils and remember that we are on stolen ground. Preserve a future where I can raise my future children without fear. Preserve our Vermont, not because you think it's right or wrong, but because it is a thing that needs to be done. There comes a time when you must choose between what is right and what is easy. The time is now. Your choice will go down in history. Choose wisely. Please help Vermont do its part to preserve the stable climate that our living planet co-evolved with and relies on. There are 7 billion plus people on this planet and many of their futures depend on some of the decisions you make. So think about the planet that we share. Protect it. Protect your children and mine. Please preserve winter in Vermont. You have the power to make your future better than what it looks like it will be. Use it. Please preserve Vermont so children will know clean air and clean water, not desperation, despair, drought, and pollution. Please do what you can to preserve life on our planet. Preserve small towns and business on a sustainable scale. Do it for our children. Please preserve a chance to build a future of resilience, freedom, unity, and healing for all who have been oppressed. Please think of all the vulnerable non-humans that will live or die because of our decisions. I want to tell my grandchildren to go outside, play there, and breathe the fresh air and smell the scent of the forest. I can't do that if there's a natural gas pipeline in the way. Please protect the soil that grows our food and feeds our, your children, and your children's children, and my children, and their children. Please put the effort into helping us to create a future where hope can grow and we can heal. There is so much to be done to create climate justice. We need your help. Thank you. Please support bills H-51, H-175, and S-66.
Okay, here, here we are with Migrant Justice, and we want to talk to them about how climate change affects farm workers and brings them to Vermont. Que provienen del cambio climático, una, una plaga que seca las hojas de la planta y se muere. Entonces, no tenemos cómo volver a, a sembrar y nos obliga a, a emigrar. Um, so, in Mexico, there are huge effects from um, climate change, um, where many of us depend on agriculture. Um, and there's been a, a sickness um, that where many plants are just drying up and dying. Um, and this means that we don't have a way to provide for our communities and it leads us to migrate. More? More? Um, and so this, this climate change um, causes us to migrate, and now that we're here, um, we need support to, to work here, and, and we need support with, with less discrimination. Y bueno, y como trabajadores este, migrantes en el estado de Vermont, estamos en solidaridad eh, con la lucha eh, por el planeta, porque el planeta es de todos y todos este, tenemos el derecho de vivir donde queremos, pero también tenemos la responsabilidad, la responsabilidad de, de, de cuidarlo y trabajar juntos para que los que tienen el poder de cambiar las leyes hagan mejores cosas para preservar eh, el planeta. And so, um, as migrant workers here in Vermont, we stand in solidarity with um, the struggle for the planet because um, the planet is for all of us. And we all have a right to live, but we also have a responsibility to work together um, and those who make the laws um, have a responsibility to, to make sure that the, the planet is healthy and that we can live. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.